Well, so let, let's talk about some, you know, I think for everybody, it has to be disturbing news, which is basically, you know, I think Russia, Vladimir Putin is uh, mobilizing 300,000 reservists reportedly, and basically saying that the nuclear option is on the table if he feels threatened. Yeah, that should just be one of the worst case scenarios anyone can ever imagine. Look, we followed this closely on the show up to Putin's invasion, and even I thought he didn't have uh, the gall to go in and do it. But what it showed me was the rise of Vladimir Putin's power on the world stage and how little he cares about an American response or retaliation or from a joint week, Western alliance response or retaliation. And what we've seen over the last, I don't know, six, eight months is Putin hanging out in Ukraine, causing death, uh, murdering kids, murdering adults, murdering women in this ugly thing we call war, which is constant there now. And he comes in yesterday, I think, or the day before and says nuclear options are on the table. That is a striking escalation. It is the ultimate escalation. There's nothing you can do past that. And so I think it's a failure of American diplomacy and geopolitical navigating overseas that is partly responsible for Putin coming to the stage and making such a definitive statement that would literally cause the end of if not the entire country, a part of it, and massive swaths of a population because that's what a nuclear weapon is for. That's why it's called the end of day's weapon. And so I really hope um, he's just conjecturing, but as a national security official, a former one, you know, hope is not a strategy. You know, what is this administration, what is the Biden administration's policy uh, to take this on and combat it? and make sure that it never happens. What are our allies in Germany, in the UK, and other West, France, what are they doing to combat it? And tragically, you've seen other mishaps on the world stage. Most recently, you heard from President Biden on a separate, but sort of related issue. He was over in the UK paying his respects to the queen, and rightfully so, and he was asked about Taiwan. And he said, what if China invades Taiwan? And President Biden, I'm paraphrasing here, basically said, we're going in. We, America, are going in. U.S. forces, U.S. men and women, would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion. Yes. And, and the world was like, wait a second. Did you just change American policy from the last 50 years vis-a-vis -vis China and Taiwan? Because that's never been our policy. And then the White House, of course, rolled it back and made ambiguous statements saying that's not what he meant. But... You're the commander in chief. When President Trump made these types of statements definitively, he knew what he was saying and he didn't have to have the White House clear it up. But you also have to remember there's Kim Jong-un in North Korea who has nuclear weapons, supposedly. And he's been firing rockets off for the last 16 months into the Sea of Japan on his, on his test flights. None of this has decreased. It has all been a constant escalation um, threatening not just American security, but civilian lives in China, in the Ukraine, in Russia, in North and South Korea, in Japan, and so many other places. And the response has been muted if, if, um, at, at best by the Biden administration. So I don't know where it's gonna go. I really don't, and it, it cannot go to nuclear war. But we are just not in a position of strength anymore. There's a number of voices out there that are basically saying, well, actually it was, you know, kind of Western aggression that precipitated this. Just, you know, give Putin what he wants. He might just be crazy enough to, to launch a nuke. Um, and let, let, let's just get peace at any cost. Well, it's not ours to give, right? You know, a piece of it is the whole NATO alliance growth since the fall of the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union, right? You know, back then, quick history, we, the Western alliances, had promised the Soviet Union that fell that there would be no infringement, no new additions of NATO countries um, along the what was then known as the Iron Curtain. Fast forward 40 some years later, they have added the NATO alliance on that border, on that Iron Curtain, has added, I believe, and you can check me, half a dozen countries into the NATO alliance. So Putin's position, I don't agree with it, but Putin's position is, okay, you guys have spent 40 years violating an agreement adding to NATO along our Russian border or in the area. And you're continuing to do so with talks of now adding Sweden and other countries into NATO. And from their perspective, they're like, you continue to break the agreements we had on an international front to end 
a conflict 30, 40 some years ago. So he's now has justification in his mind to create a new conflict and escalate it so much so that we're now talking about nuclear weapons. And that is a direct result of, I believe, the politicization of our American national security apparatus, which has severely weakened um, during President Biden's regime. Because, look, you don't have to be a Trump fan to know it, but these types of things did not happen on the national security front during President Trump's presidency, whether it be Xi Jinping in China, Putin in uh, Russia, or Kim Jong-un in North Korea. Okay, let, let me see if I understand you correctly. This is something that Ukraine has to decide. But of course, there's this whole Western coalition, which is, you know, that Ukraine wouldn't have a defense without its support, right? Right. And that's why that whole NATO discussion comes back into the fold. It's, it's not America singularly to um, defeat this escalation by Vladimir Putin. It's not like we can, we America can just hand him something and he'll say, okay, we're good. We'll go back. Mm. It's going to take a collaboration of the Western powers and the Ukraine, because that's where the war is. And it's, if, if that's the road they go down, it's going to take some significant land concessions in the Ukraine that I just, you know, from my reading of what's been going on, I don't see the Ukrainian people willing to give up. So I don't think that it's going to be resolved in that diplomatic fashion because of what I said earlier, too. We just don't have, we America don't have the global stance we used to have two, three years ago. The, the WASTA, if you will, to come in there and say, this is how we're going to bring the Western alliance together. This is how we're going to take on Putin. This is how we're going to shut him down. And this is how, mo most importantly, we're going to get him off the nuclear weapons discussions. So no, you didn't think Putin was going to go in. I didn't think Putin was going to go in. Um, I don't think Putin's going to use nuclear Oof. weapons. I don't know what you think, but uh, is this just bluster? Is this just a way to gain leverage? Because obviously it would be, it seems like a pretty strong way to try to do that. What is it? Um, you know, I think he is playing his chess pieces better than the rest of the world right now in that region. Because A, he doesn't care about Russian casualties or Russian soldier casualties. It's not something that he's concerned with. Um, he cares about his survival and at the, as the head of the Russian state. And so a lot of people back in Russia agree with him. A lot of people don't, but a lot of people do. I don't, I don't know that I have a definitive response today on whether or not he'll use nuclear weapons. As I said earlier, I hope not, but that's not a good strategy. And being, having been wrong on the Ukraine invasion leads me to recalculate my answer to that question. Six, eight months ago, I would have said, no, not possible at all. Now, unfortunately, I'm, I have to think about that heavily, and I don't have an exact answer. I, I unfortunately believe that Putin is serious about that threat, which is a, in and of itself a massive escalation on the global front and global security.